Tell me about this ETF and what it tracks, what is the index it tracks, and whose index is it? Sure. Well, there's this whole phenomenon of the internet and social media, and there are millions of investors who comment on stocks in social media. And the index, so uh, the, we, the fund tracks an index that sucks up all those messages. It determines whether the tweets about stocks are positive and negative and comes into sentiment rankings. And it takes the top, these are all big cap stocks. It takes the top 75 every month and it puts it in that index. And then we, as a, the ETF uh, manager, track that index. So what it does is it looks for, for stocks that are getting positive commentary online, in chat rooms, in the media as well? Or, or would, would folks like CNBC not, not be sucked up by your algorithm, by the big vacuum cleaner? It's, it's just looking at social media, but of course you affect social media. Yeah. So who, who set up this index? Did you, or is it, is it by a, uh, a State Street or an S&P, or who? Whose index is it? It's actually a, a very smart uh, money management shop based in Toronto, Canada, has been looking at this, uh, this phenomenon for many years. The index started in 2015, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, they used natural language processing and machine learning to process all these millions of signals and came up with this idea. I will say that the, the concept that there is some kind of information, some value uh -huh. in social media is something that hedge funds and academics have appreciated for, for quite a while. So as you look at this index and compare it, or you back test it, obviously your ETF just came out today. If you, if you compare it to the performance of say the S&P 500, um, how does it do as you look backwards so the good news is the index has been live since that 2015 time period. So this isn't academic research. This They were publishing their constituents every month since that time period. And so uh, over that time period, it's done very well against the S&P. Of course, that's historical performance, but right. it's beat by about 10% a year. Yeah, I, I'm curious because when you, when you look at so many of the names that have moved the most, been mentioned the most uh, from a stock perspective just since the start of this year. Um, they tend to be very volatile. They tend to be smaller cap names. So just in terms of the methodology, what is going into this index and how you are navigating some of that very intense volatility we've seen in some of those stocks? Yeah, no, thank you for asking, because this is not a meme stock index. There are several rules that the index follows to protect some of those small caps from getting in. First of all, a company needs to have a $5 million market cap. $5 million or $5 billion? $5 billion, I'm sorry, $5 oh, yeah. billion. Uh, so Thank you for correcting me. Uh, so it's pretty hard to start manipulating a mid-cap or a large-cap stock. Uh, the other thing is it doesn't just capture short bursts of messages. It really looks over a 12-month period for eligibility for a stock into the index. So of the, of the large cap stocks, only about 250 to 300 are eligible for the top 75 on any given month. I'm curious, I mean, it's under pressure today, right? It's first day of trading, I get that. It's down about 5%. We have this broader market sell off afoot as well. Growth, anything momentum-y is really getting hit particularly hard today. Given the rising interest rate environment we find ourselves in, at least versus the historic, even more historic lows that, that we were at just a couple of weeks ago. Um, if you feel like the timing of this uh, was maybe not as fortuitous as, as planned. Well, you know, we try to offer unique exposures every time we come out with an ETF. So this is not just a growth or momentum uh, strategy. We looked at that. And if you look at some of the names, Carnival, Ford, GE, they're kind of more turnaround names. So it's actually a combination of tech names and turnaround names, I'd say. But, um, you know, so, so, yes, I would say what we said in November of last year is that the, uh, you know, the obvious is obvious, meaning interest rates at 80 basis points on the 10-year are only going to go up. We projected to 1.5% or 2% this year. So it's, it's going to be more of a year for Main Street than it is Wall Street. But you have to have, be patient, you know, get to have time on your side as an investor. So this may not have been the best day, but... You own stocks for the longer term. I think you'll be happy. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.